Hey guys, what the hell's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, it's a little chilly today. We're in the 60s. We'll be like this for another two days. It's, it really is beautiful going outside. Listen, I've been paying electric bill. I've been paying $18 for my electric bill for months. And I was always saying, you know, I guess I got something extra or some kind of sick. You know, I said, this could be this idea, you know, that, you know, Jesus is working in my favor. But God damn it, winds up being that my the the uh, number the thing the uh, the little thing the little thing you know the electric thing was broken. So oh my God, all these months that I've been working on this, they they're running a test this week to see how much electricity I used, and then to tell me how much I'm gonna owe. And I kind of knew it. I kind of knew it, you know. And I wasn't taking advantage of it so much, but. Uh, you know, it is winter time, and uh, and I work off of gas. So, you know, right now, you know, for the next week, you know, no electricity is going to be used hardly at all, you know, because they're going to base my new bill off of it. But anyways, it's okay. It's only, the thing is, is you know, uh, I find out it's really, my, my bills have been, uh, it'll probably be about 20 or $30 more than the $18 that I've been paying. So it's really not that bad. And I'll pay whatever, so. Just damn it, shit. That could have been a secret that lasts forever and ever and ever, you know. Anyhow, um, so I was wanting to work with the project today with you uh, before, well, before I go and do something. I was been, I have been, uh, I woke up, and usually something comes in my mind, this idea of bread, this idea of the leavened bread or a bread, this idea of bread. And, of course, the story goes is that uh, when Jesus is speaking to these to a group of people, and remember now, these, these are sayings. This is saints because he's created something uh, in a parable so that you have to think about it, you know, and his disciples are back in the back listening to him. He said, this is a rough saying, you know. Uh, and so you, even in the stories, you know, it's like he says, you know, uh, the bread of heaven. This is the bread of heaven that if man would eat from this and then he and drink its blood, that if he could live forever, you know. And so... Um, this is the whole point of this Jesus situation because it's a resurrection. It's about bringing someone back to life, but going through a particular death sentence, some kind of a death sentence, uh, after having been going through a, a, an ordeal because, you know, since he's been born, which, uh, you know, since he's been born, he's, he's had this trek. He's had to go on this journey to do as his father had told him to do. And so, and that was to, you know, to die for the sins of man, you know, and the, um, and so here we have this, this historical uh, man jumping off. Well, it'd be easier if he just jumped off into a volcano, you know, that's the way they used to do it, you know, whatever, you know, toss him into the, toss him into the, uh, into a volcano fire. But no, we had to beat the hell out of this one here and then murder him. That's the whole point of, you know, salvation for Christianity or Christian people that believe that Christ dies for them. All right. That's uh, I say dies and murder, you know, these are two different things. He sacrificed his life because his father sent him on this particular mission to do this for him was to uh, to save his child and bring his child home to him. He has plenty of room up there in his mansions, in his world. All right, so that's an outside thing. I want to stop that noise right now because you just can't help but understand this Bible. When Jesus says that it is his, it is his uh, skin, that he is the son of man, the Son of Man is, is our soul. 
when you ever find that out, when you ever find that out, you are asked to uh, to kill it, kill kill this outside. You want to release this thing that's inside of you, and this is what it means to to get rid of the skin, break the bread. The bread is our skin. So once you break this bread and you let out this this uh, your your soul, does it bring it into a better light? And uh, and it's and it's not a death, you know. It's not a death sentence that happens to us. It's bringing us out of this death. All of these stories about Jesus wants to bring us out of a death. Wants to bring us out of this place. And that the idea of drinking his blood. This is you know you you've got to break out and then you and the, what did we do? We we wind up meeting. He takes us over to the to the Holy Ghost. He takes us to Mother. This is the wine. This is the blood. This is what that is about. Just because all these symbolisms that, that I could say, you know, that this means this, this is this, 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 it's true. It's the it's it's just the spiritual side of things. Yes, there's another word for uh, for fasting. Yeah, it means not to eat. Yeah, but is it that hard for you to understand that it also means don't feed the mind to shut it off, don't give it anything, try to kill it. Try to cut it off, try to do it. And even that, circumcision. Circumcision, yes, it means something on the outside, but it's totally biblical related. Why else would anybody want to ruin God's perfect human being, perfect human being, and cut part of his dick off, you know? Saying it was unholy. Well, God made the whole damn thing. And of course, this is another thing. We're going inside and we're talking about Jesus and God being with us and dwelling with us. And then we hear this, hear this, that you can't, you don't have God in you, you know, you can, you're worshiping yourselves. You know, it says right here in the Bible that if we did what he said, if we walked in his way and we did what we were taught to do, that yes, we would indeed bring on the Holy Ghost, we would bring Mother into the light, and that, we, that would be honoring Mother and Father, and we would have walked the way of Jesus in order to do it. And so this is, the, and using the internal system of our bodies to do it, that this is something that happens to an individual. It doesn't happen to the mass. It's not offered to the outside. It's only offered to those that seek him on the inside. And so our flesh, our body, becomes a sacrifice, the bread itself. So you break bread, you open this bread up, and he says, do this in remembrance of me. So you would understand that bread is the body, and if the body, body is the brethren. So you're rebuking your brethren. You're going to straighten them out. We're going up to fix this grievous head wound of ours. So bread, the bread of life. Here, let's read up on this. I got it. I did a little homework real quick. And uh, did I did I do my homework correctly? Hang on just one moment. Yes, so I can tell you where I got it from. John, uh, this is chapter 6, okay? And maybe I'll just read it right off instead of off my, my thing here. But it goes like this. It starts off with 50 in this particular zone here. But uh, it's going to go from 50 through... 59, all right? So we'll get nine nine ideas out of this. 50 starts off with two in our four list when we talk about reading our Bibles. 50 is going to wind up being the second one here, right? It'll be second, third, and fourth. So that's how it works. So 50 is the second one. It says here, it says here, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. So it's talking about this middle place. This is the idea that this is where our, 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 our emotions are. And this is the one that's governed by the moon and red for the, for, uh, for, uh, red is for blood. Whenever this, when the moon is, is turned off, you know, it's no longer shining its light and stuff like that. But anyways, this is the area this, the second one, is the one where we have that up and then down. So this is where heaven be located in these things here, at least the going to get there, the how to get there. It says, uh, so this bread that cometh down from heaven, 
that a man may eat thereof and not die. It says here, third would be, I am the living bread which came down from heaven, that if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. This is the third one. All right, and this is number 51. 51 is a six. All right, I know all these numbers are crazy, it's crazy for me too. Six is the is the route. This six actually represents this up and down movement. So, what do we get out of this? Is there should be a four behind this? All right, oh, it's so hard to get keep this going. I it, not only is it on the physical side of us, this number three, not only is it representing the flesh itself, this, this number 51, it starts out by this. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of me or eat this bread, uh, oh, if any man eat of this bread, this, that's the mind. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh, which I will give for life of the world. All right. So there's your four showing right up into this in there. Whereas our physical, our, our, our spiritual side, that if, if we make it over to this place, which I will give the life of this world, for the world. And this is about the four. The four is representing the world. The four is representing you, the mind, what's going on with you. That's what this is about, all right? Number 52 becomes the end of this four. four. So it says, the Jews therefore stove among themselves, saying, how can, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? All right, now we got a new world. All right, number 53 goes like this. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye will have no life in you at all. All right, now this is another four, you guys. When Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, this is number, this, to, I'm saying unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye will have no life in you. This is number, you're in your, your spiritual side. If you do not do this, you will not have any life in you. And this is told to us so many times in these stories that what occupies the spiritual side of us in our mind, in ourselves, is robbers and thieves and, and demons. You know, I keep forgetting to add demons to this business, you know. But that's what we have at first. And so Jesus is coming to save man, you know. And until you do what he says to do, that'd be following his way. You know, drink his blood, get get mother going down. You know, then you're not going to live. So it, it repeats itself again. So here we are where we at number 54, which representing two. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. This is number 54. That's another world. Listen to this. It says, whosoever eateth my flesh. Drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. That's how it works. On the last day, his spiritual side is going to be brought up. So this is another world within this. Okay. Next. Which one? Number 55. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. That's number 55. 55 is representing the third part of our part, the, which is in the, the physical side, the physical side of us, the south, right? That's what this would be. So my flesh is meat indeed, my, flu, my blood is drink indeed. So you're looking at the, what is physical and what is spiritual. There's always the two that are played here, the physical 
and the spiritual, what's what mankind and womankind. Okay, that's how it works. All right, and then we get number 56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Check this one out, another one. He that eateth my flesh, drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me and I in him. Beautiful. All right, now we get a whole other world that's getting down to the end of this. 57. And as the living Father sent me, I live by my Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is number 57, right? 57 is the beginning of a new world, new place. So it's the first one. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's, a, that's going to be a 3. So here we go. As the living Father, which is the first one, the one, the intellect, the mind, the person. All right. As the living Father has sent me, I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, the bread of life, the 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 Lamb of God, the physical side of us, the South. He who eateth me, even he shall live by me. Isn't that just beautiful? All right. And we come down to number 58. 58 is representing a two. I mean, it's representing the second one, this one here. So 58, here we go. This is the bread this is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Okay? So this is some this is a dig saying here your your fathers what your fathers eaten or they died. They're dead, they're not here. People that are gonna eat what I'm giving them is going to live forever. All right, and this is representing this part of our body, this part of our mind, the the the, uh, uh, the emotional side of us, or the what's going to come from the north. All right, from a higher place. All right, and let's see here. We got one more, and this here is number fifty nine. Number fifty nine. Oh, this is just the idea that these things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Cape Capernaum. All right, so when he's teaching in the synagogue, it's like he's teaching in 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 the churches. All right, it doesn't matter whether it's Jewish this or that. You know, it's just the idea that when he's out in the church, he's telling these people, and he's speaking in parables, and he's trying to, how can we eat your flesh? How can we do any of this stuff? Well, you know, I we we you know I we we just happen to know that. This means to go into meditation and we do the sacrifice of the flesh and the mind. We have these, these are, that's heaven and earth. Those are the witnesses. Let heaven and earth be a witness. And we'll know that this is what happens to us when we go inside and we do what Jesus tells us to do. We break bread and drink the, drink, drink the wine, you know, do this in remembrance of me. And what happens is that the remembrance part is this idea that, you know, hey, when you get back, this is this is a beautiful thing that happens. But mankind, reading the Bible a certain way, is very terrified by this. Just absolutely scares them to death. Tribulations and just being, just uh, uh, being, uh, Oh, I don't know. Oh, it just scares them to death that they've got fire and brimstone and gnashing of teeth and the devil and all this business with hell and heaven and stuff. It's just, it's so confusing to the outside world. That's why it's got the spots and leopards with skin spotted, you know, and leopards. That it's always going to be confused. And your body's always going to lie to you. It's, it's the way the outside world goes. That's how it goes. And that's what you get, you know. That's what we've received. If you want any more, it's better. You have to take a little bit of instruction. Go inside and take care of this shit on your own. This is how it works and bring God in.
to you. It tells you this is how it is. Everybody does it. You do this, you know, I'll dwell with you. You dwell with me. We're going to be side by side. We're going to be like two birds and a cow tail. All right. Of course, I've been saying three birds and one cow tail, you know. All right. So I hope you got something out of this, you know, about the bread. We can talk more about it, but bread and eleven bread, bread, you know, one is, is when we come up to see them, it says there'll be no bread at all. And no leaven bread, and that means more bread that rises, so there can't be any of that in the house because you have to die. The whole idea is to come there from no life in you. That's the point of it. And you break this, break this in half, and let what's inside it out, and then the wine comes. All right, I'll see you guys. I hope you got something out of this. I've got more to tell you about us a little bit later. All right, I have to learn a few more things.